BBC News at midday. King Charles is due to meet the Prime Minister Liz Truss at Buckingham Palace in the next hour as final preparations continue for Queen Elizabeth's state funeral tomorrow. He's also receiving other leaders of Commonwealth countries before hosting a reception for hundreds of international politicians and royal dignitaries this evening. New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern met the King yesterday. Speaking on the BBC Sunday with Laura Kunzberg programme, she reflected on their conversation. We always try to keep in in close confidence the conversations we're lucky enough to have with His Majesty, but the overriding sentiment was just the gratitude for the great effort that people were putting into coming and paying their respects. And by that, I mean not just leaders, but people. Uh, You could see that it meant a huge amount to have seen the sheer scale and outpouring of people's love and affection for Her Late Majesty. People hoping to travel to London to file past Queen Elizabeth's coffin have been advised not to set off to avoid disappointment because the queue is likely to be closed in the next few hours. Anyone joining the line now can still expect to wait in excess of 13 hours to reach Westminster Hall. There'll be a national one-minute silence at 8 o'clock tonight. Downing Street says Liz Truss will stand on the doorstep of number 10 to mourn and reflect on the life and legacy of Queen Elizabeth. It's encouraged community groups across the country to share in the opportunity. Police and other officials in Leicester have called for calm after violent street clashes in the city last night. Officers had to separate hundreds of people, mostly men, in two groups from Hindu and Muslim communities. Two arrests were made. It's the latest in a series of disturbances, initially sparked by a cricket match between India and Pakistan late last month. The independent MP for Leicester East, Claudia Webb, said she was deeply concerned and shocked by what she called hate-filled violence in her constituency. I'm also concerned by those who have been intent on provoking violence. There has been outside influences in terms of use of social media and other online communication to incite religious and racial hatred, which of course has been designed to cause fear, alarm and distress and to provoke a reaction. High winds and heavy rain from one of Japan's most powerful typhoons in decades are battering the southern island of Kyushu. In some areas, more than a month's worth of rain has already fallen. Several million people have been urged to head for emergency shelters. Hundreds of flights have been cancelled. The storm is making its way slowly across Kyushu and is then expected to sweep across the country's most populated areas over the coming days. A second big earthquake in two days has struck off Taiwan. The latest 6.9 magnitude tremor hit the southeast of the island. At least three buildings collapsed in the town of Yuni and roads were torn up. But forecasters say the threat of a tsunami has passed. Research suggests that people can cut their risk of developing type 2 diabetes if they drink four or more cups of tea a day. Some experts have questioned the findings. Tom Harrigan reports. The scientists in China who led this research reviewed 19 different studies involving more than a million people from eight countries. Their work hasn't been peer-reviewed, but they found that drinking black, green or oolong tea every day was linked to a 17% lower risk of diabetes over an average of 10 years. The team says it's possible that the main compounds in tea, called polyphenols, may reduce blood glucose levels if people consume enough of it. But other researchers point out that these studies were not controlled, so can't prove that tea prevents diabetes. They also say that tea is generally less sugary than other drinks, and its most avid consumers may lead more healthy lifestyles anyway. BBC News. This is BBC Radio 4. Now, Mark Steele's in town. Oh, yeah, I know a good fact about Salisbury. It's a very small city. We call it Smallsbury. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I can't think of a local landmark. Cathedral. Old Sarum, I think, is my favourite. Stonehenge. You can walk around the outside and not pay. Um... Port and Down. <clears throat> I don't know anybody that works at Port and Down. But it's shrouded in secrecy. She'd know when they were testing because she'd come out in spots. If I told you that, I'd have to kill you. I've said too much already. Because of the Novichok incident, we're not allowed to pick up any litter. Smallsbury. <laughs> Everyone thinks we're posh. (laughs) Superior to Winchester. It's nice. Mark Steele's in town. to Mark Stills in town, which this week comes from the beautiful city of Salisbury in Wiltshire. 
Wiltshire, Wiltshire, a county that is mostly a huge army base, saying, don't worry, Salisbury, we'll protect you from Swindon. Right? <laughs> Because this is a genteel town that is never in the news, except... <laughs> except maybe when otters are discovered in the cathedral or it's the target of international espionage. <laughs> it's just a jolly city where nothing happens. Uh, now, I'm not sure, Salisbury, if you know what you want to be. In the marketplace, for example, there are all these food and drink stalls set up and there's a sign that says street food and then the first stall is a PIMS tent. <laughs> One of the messages that I was sent about Salisbury went, I once got mugged outside Sainsbury's for a coconut. <laughs> People think it's all cathedral this and Magna Carta that, but see, there's a dark underbelly. <laughs> but you like to present a certain image, Salisbury. I bought a book called 50 Historic Buildings of Salisbury, and on one page it says, St Anne's Gate is a canonry where the composer Handel gave his first public concert, and then Bishop's Gate is a grade one listed building with a four-centred arch. Are there any normal buildings here? <laughs> There's the Royal School of Church Music, the Royal Artillery Rifle Museum, or a plaque that says, this house is where eggs were invented. <laughs> a measure of what this place is like is in a book called 50 Historic Buildings of Salisbury. It doesn't even mention Stonehenge. <laughs> This is the only place I've been to where every building seems to have something written on it in Latin. I bet most of you look at a sign that says TK Max and stand there for 20 minutes working out... <laughs> <laughs> ..working out what year it meant that was built. <laughs> so you think you've worked out what Salisbury is all about and then you see a 